This is Abby Martin. Welcome to Media Roots Radio. So I wanted to record a little addition to the podcast you're about to listen to because a lot of that conversation is about the true legacy of George H.W. Bush, and we would be remiss to talk only about a war criminal's death without mentioning how we actually lost a true hero who spent his life exposing war crimes. My comrade, journalist, author, William Bloom, who we spoke about in a previous episode needing medical help, has died at 85 years old. He was one of the most fervent, fiercest critics of U.S. foreign policy, and his work will serve as a beacon for generations to come. I interviewed him on Breaking the Set a couple years ago, and we had kept in touch ever since. And we got into some heated arguments, one of which he criticized my report on the Berlin Wall and said, I thought you were red. Um, The other, I criticized him on his coverage of ISIS. But at the end of the day, I think he saw me as kind of the torchbearer carrying on his work in a way, and... I just wish I could have been closer to him earlier on to glean more of his genius. Two of his books, I think, are really crucial books for understanding the scope and consequences of U.S. militarism and imperialism. Rogue State and Killing Hope. Killing Hope, U.S. military and CIA intervention since World War II is a book thoroughly documenting U.S. interventions and one I relied on heavily for the creation and continuation of Empire Files. On Twitter, Alex Burnell told me this, Killing Hope is one of those seminal texts in my turn to the left. In the anti-war canon, it's irreplaceable. It's one of the most thorough records of invasions, democratic subversions, propaganda efforts that the U.S. Empire was responsible for in the 20th century. And I wanted to read a quick introduction to Killing Hope about Americans' willful ignorance of their government's actions. That's really, really fascinating. The former Chinese premier, Cho Enlai, once observed, One of the delightful things about Americans is that they have absolutely no historical memory. It's probably even worse than he realized. During the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant accident in Pennsylvania, a Japanese journalist, Atsu Kaneko, of the Japanese Kyoto News Service, spent several hours interviewing people temporarily housed at a hockey rink, mostly children, pregnant women, and young mothers. He discovered that none of them had heard of Hiroshima. Mention of the name drew a blank. To the foreign policy oligarchy in Washington, it is more than delightful. So obscured is the comprehensive record of American interventions that when, in 1975, the Congressional Research Service of the Library of Congress was asked to undertake a study of covert activities of the CIA to date, it was able to come up with a very minor portion of the overseas incidents presented in this book for the same period. For all the information that's made its way into popular consciousness or into school texts, encyclopedias, or other standard reference works, there might as well exist strict censorship in the United States. Incredible. Rogue State is pretty much a mini-encyclopedia of the many criminal acts perpetrated by the United States. You know, Osama bin Laden once hailed Bloom's blistering critique of U.S. empire as well. Sadly, this really affected Bloom's speaking tours and engagements when, in reality, people should have heralded this. Again, Bloom really does talk about this dumbed-down notion of American policymakers saying, why do they hate us? And they keep perpetuating the notion that we're different when we commit atrocities because we mean well and we have no idea why people attack us. And, you know, he talks about this idea that the rise of anti-American terrorism owes nothing to American policies. In fact, postulates an America that is always the aggrieved innocent in a treacherous world, a benign U.S. government peacefully going about its business but being provoked into taking extreme measures to defend its people, its freedom, its democracy. There, consequently, is no good reason to modify U.S. foreign policy, and many who might observe otherwise know better are scared into supporting the empire's wars out of the belief that there's no choice but to crush without mercy, or even without evidence, this irrational international force out there that hates the U.S. with an abiding passion. And he discusses how in most of these cases terrorism is committed against the West in a declared act of retaliation against Western foreign policy. He discusses thoroughly how terrorism is fundamentally propaganda. It's a bloody form of propaganda, and it follows that if the perpetrators of a terrorist act declare what their objective was, their statement should carry credibility. No matter what one thinks of the objective or the method used to achieve it, and he goes over a very long list of actual declarations 
of everyone from the 93 World Trade Center bombing to Osama bin Laden. So going back to Osama bin Laden citing his book, Rogue State, saying it would be useful for Americans to read this. There's a serious message here that people should pay attention to. Why do they hate us? Well, Bill pretty much elucidates that. Bill also wrote for a bulletin called the Covert Action Information Bulletin, where he exposed people like the assassin-in-chief of a network that the UN later found had killed more than 900 people. This guy had been trained at the International Police Academy, which was a CIA training outfit based in Virginia. So this is like one of the many things that he would expose. And I wanted to follow up with just a final note from his anti-empire report. He wrote for years and years and years a newsletter to about a thousand subscribers called the Anti-Empire Report. And it was a weekly newsletter of incredible insight. I read it every week. And in one of his editions of the report, Bill writes this, and I'm going to close out here. If I were the president, I could stop terrorist attacks against the United States in a few days, permanently. I would first apologize very publicly and very sincerely, to all the widows and orphans, the impoverished and the tortured, and all the many millions of other victims of American imperialism. Then I would announce to every corner of the world that America's global military interventions have come to an end. I would then inform Israel that it is no longer the 51st State of the Union, but oddly enough, a foreign country. Then I would reduce the military budget by at least 90% and use the savings to pay reparations to the victims and repair the damage from the many American bombings, invasions, and sanctions. There would be more than enough money. One year's military budget in the U.S. is equal to more than 20000 per hour for every hour since Jesus Christ was born. And that's one year. That's what I would do on my first three days in the White House. On the fourth day, I'd be assassinated. Rest in peace, William Bloom. This is Robbie Martin chiming in on the tragic death of William Bloom. I don't know what more I can add to Abby's really nice, heartfelt eulogy. But I just wanted to say that, William, you are a huge inspiration on me. And to me, you almost seem like a prophet. Your prescience is so incredible that when I found out that your book... Rogue State, A Guide to the World's Only Superpower, was written in 2000, and not after 9-11. I was completely blown away. It's those rare examples that you see of anti-imperialist people who were studying U.S. foreign policy. It almost seems like they had lived through 9-11 by the things they were writing, and William Bloom falls into that category like no other. You can compare him to Chomsky, Howard Zinn, and some other people, but for me, he was more important and more formative for my worldview as an anti-imperialist. I first read Killing Hope around the time of the Iraq war, maybe a little after. It just completely shaped my view of America forever. Rest in peace, William. You will be missed. <laughs> 